what you guys got another video the only windows 11 optimizer you will need now basically you can use this on windows 10 or windows 11 but you can see windows 11 obviously needs quite a bit of work done to it because of the amount of bloat pre-installed default apps that come on the system all the settings that you have to go through and turn off all the telemetry all of the data harvesting that goes on you can turn all of this off with applications and remove a lot of stuff like edge and a lot of settings that you don't need the tool is called raytune x and it's a pretty decent tool it's a one-stop solution for all of your windows tweaking that you might need to do on windows 11 or windows 10. now we all know that windows 11 is fully bloated with loads of stuff that you don't need and you have to jump through a load of hoops to try and turn everything off that you don't want with this tool it just makes life a lot easier so the installation part of it is recommended to use this winget install link here and i would advise using this method because of the way windows is now starting to block tools just like this one so downloading executable files it might be problematic to get them to run on the system whereas i found this way is the easiest way so right click on the start button go to windows terminal app with admin privileges and paste in the command it will go ahead and ask you do you agree to their terms conditions say yes here obviously you're going to be using this at your own risk so make sure that you have all your data backed up and you understand what you're getting into before you run any sort of software like this on the system because it will be making changes to your computer's settings now the good thing about this tool is it gives you full control on what you're doing on the system i.e it's rocker buttons where you turn them on to disable certain features it is reversible but the good thing about it it means it's not running in the background turning stuff off that you have no clue of what it's doing on the back end this gives you full control of what you want to disable and enable on that system so let's go ahead and close this off now because it's now installed onto the system if we open up the start button here we can see it's now installed so let's say yes to the user account control here and what we want to do here is the program's going to open up and the first thing it's going to want to do is create a restore point for you just in case you want to roll back in case anything goes wrong so we're going to click continue here to let it create a restore point on the system once that's done we can then start to tweak the system so I've gone full screen mode here. Let's go to settings first and change it to dark mode here. So you can see it a little bit better. And there's also an area here where we can check for updates as well to make sure we're using the very latest version. So this program is actively being updated all the time. So it's going to be changed and updated pretty regular by the creator. So let's start off with the optimization. Now tweak what settings you want. Don't just go and follow what i'm doing here because i am not following any sort of rule of thumb here i'm just going straight through and just check marking everything but you can take your time and read exactly what it is that you're disabling now remember you need to understand what you're doing before you actually disable something just in case you need it later on down the line so i'm just going to go ahead and check mark a lot of this stuff because i know a lot of this stuff is pretty much blow anyway but again understand what you're doing like disable windows shake if you need windows shake then don't disable it it's that simple so just read the actual text and what they actually do and if you don't know what it does then leave it alone it's that simple so some of this stuff is pretty much the optimization side of things we'll get to the privacy and the other side like the bloating side a little bit later on so i'm just going to quickly uh, toggle these on so we've got all these toggled on so next we can go to the advanced system optimization settings here disable unnecessary services right here you can toggle that on and again optimize system profiles you can actually do that right here by just toggling this on as well enhance cpu and priority settings right here if you want to adjust those you can do and then you've got disable uh, frame server mode and then we've got adjust low latency gpu settings right here now remember when you're toggling this on it's actually doing stuff in the background there'll be a bunch of edits that it's going to make to maybe the registry or something like that to adjust 
it to those settings. Now you can probably find out what all those are on their website. So check through and make sure you read and understand everything you do to your system. Disable sysmain and disable NTFS, a timestamp and a bunch of other stuff here. Make sure you understand what you're doing. So here we go, system uh, compression. I would probably leave this alone, but if you're one of these people that want to compress your OS, this is where you would do it. You just click on this and it would start to compress your OS right here. Uh, let's move on to the next section here, which is disable service host splitting and enable late, uh, legacy boot menu. Then we've got also optimize NTFS settings and disable paging file. Now the, the paging file, I've talked about this before. Again, I would not really disable the paging file uh, myself, but some people may want to, and you can have that debate amongst yourselves if you believe that you should or you shouldn't. It's entirely up to you what you do there. Again, use the settings that you want for your system. Disable system restore point. Well, that's a bit pointless because we've just created a restore point to make sure we have a safety net. So disabling it would be a bit pointless. Disable Cortana, disable store updates, and also disable automatic updates. I would leave that alone. Again, disable smart screen. I wouldn't touch that either. Your repair section is here. This is for your DISM and your SFC, which is basically uh, the integrity of your files and stuff like that. We've got check disk there as well to check the disk on your system. You've got battery health, memory diagnostics, disk optimization, and event viewer here. Just a quick shortcut links to those there. Let's go to the debloat section because this is probably somewhere where you want to be if you want to lighten the load on your system. There is a bunch of apps inside here. I've already got Google Chrome installed on the system and I will remove Edge and all the other junk that comes pre-installed on here. So again, choose which ones you want to uh, remove from the system. Once you're happy, click on uninstall selected apps and you'll see a big list here. So we're going to debloat these and remove them from the system. It will take a bit of time. There's a little timeline on the bottom there that it says uninstalling, as you can see. And uh, once that's all done, you would have these all removed from the computer. So I'll quickly show you what you get. You get a pop-up here with all of the list of apps that were removed. You can close that off and you can see there's hardly any apps left inside here. On the privacy section here, you can toggle these on if you don't need any of these, like disabling advertisement ID and also disable Bluetooth advertising and disable news and interests. All this stuff is just extra added bloat that people don't need like disable spotlight features and all that sort of stuff. Just go through and check mark the stuff you don't want. Telemetry is self-explanatory. This is all to do with harvesting information and you can toggle these all on to disable the telemetry and data harvesting that happens inside Windows 11. Just gonna skip through these just to show you what they are. I'm not actually reading all of these, but I'm just showing you what you can do again. Disable handwriting, data sharing. These are all uh, privacy settings inside Windows that you would have to manually go in and disable and sometimes have to go into group policy. This is going to be setting these policies up for you and adding registry edits for you so you don't have to go through and do all of that and it's going to disable all that stuff for you. So it makes it super easy and quick. Uh, disable hibernation, uh, disable home group, Disable print service. Now, if you have a printer, I would leave that alone. Goes without saying. Disable the search. If you want to keep your Windows search, then don't toggle that on. Leave it. It's that simple. So going through the disable game bar and all the other stuff like widgets, uh, disable chat and so on. Once you've got all of your settings right, you can go ahead and apply all those by just toggling which ones you want on. And that should be done. And all you need to do now is basically restart your system and you should have a super clean uh, system. And I'll show you what it looks like in a second. I'm gonna quickly restart here and uh, just to make sure we've got all these settings set in stone and you can already see that it looks absolutely clean as a whistle. So let me quickly restart and we're back at the desktop. I'm just gonna make two little adjustments here. One is this search box. I don't really want it that big. So I'm just gonna change the icon and we can go from search box to uh, search icon only or you can hide it completely if you don't want it on the taskbar and if you don't want the other ones you can remove them as well 
and just have your start button if you're one of those people. But I do like to have those settings like that there. I'm just going to remove this LinkedIn and it's just one little thing. That's all that is. All the rest is gone. Everything has been removed from the system. It's all nice and clean, as you can see right here. And it's probably one of the cleanest uh, installations that you're going to get. And I think it's probably one of the best tools out there that I've used so far that makes things a lot more easier for you. It's self-explanatory. You just toggle the switches and it does all the hard work for you. It's nice and easy to understand. So if you're looking for a tool that's very simplistic and very easy to use, then this might be the one for you. I'll leave a link on the video description or on my website. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Have a lovely day and I'll catch you in the next one or see you on the Discord server. Bye for now.